needle aspiration of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a soft, small bow-shaped gland which is located in the front of the neck, below the larynx and on either side of the trachea. The thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones known as T3 and T4 which regulate body and brain development, also growth, body temperature, energy levels and metabolic functions. It is important as it influences and regulates the activity of all cells and tissues within the body. Sometimes issues arise within the thyroid gland. These can be known as hypothyroidism, such as Hashimoto's disease, hypothyroidism, such as Graves' disease, and the one relevant to this video are thyroid nodules. A thyroid nodule can be benign, meaning non-cancerous or malignant, and they are either filled with fluid or thyroid gland cells. More than 95% of thyroid nodules are benign, and they are seen more frequently in women than in men. Of the 5% of nodules that are cancerous, there are certain factors that increase your risk of having a thyroid nodule, these being a hard nodule, age under 20 or over 70 years, a history of head or neck radiation exposure, a family history of thyroid cancer, lack of iodine or a chronic inflammation of the thyroid gland, such as seen in Hashimoto's disease. Thinking of this, we will now discuss a case of a young girl, Emma, who is 14 and a half years old. In October 2011, she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and at the time an incidental TSH that was raised was noted as well as a lowish T4. In 2012, a small goiter was noted and then in August 2013, a thyroid nodule was noted in the lower pole of the right lobe with slight enlargement in November 2013. It had an appearance consistent with the Hashimoto's gland. So from this time, from 2011 to 2015, it was serially monitored with ultrasound. Then, in November 2015 to 2016, Emma's nodule was noted to be increasing rapidly in size and becoming more vascular, so as a result, she was sent for an FNA. An FNA biopsy of the thyroid nodule is a simple and safe procedure performed as a day procedure for most people. This test is usually performed under ultrasound guidance to ensure accurate placement of a small needle within the thyroid gland. This procedure will take up to about half an hour with a short period of observation afterwards to ensure individual recovers appropriately. This procedure doesn't require any specific preparation unless you have certain risk factors which we will discuss shortly. You may eat and drink as you would normally. A local anaesthetic or ice may be used to numb the area. As noted, ultrasound guided FNA is a relatively safe procedure. There are some rare and potential risks that you may need to be aware of. Bruising or minor bleeding may occur post the FNA procedure. If you are taking any blood thinning medications, these may need to be stopped prior to having your FNA. This needs to be strictly supervised by your doctor and planned prior to you having the procedure. Transient pain and discomfort may be felt, but this is usually well tolerated by most individuals. Infection is very rare and is usually only seen in individuals that have skin issues such as atopic dermatitis or if they are immunocompromised. Very rarely there can be damage to vital neck structures such as the vocal cords and nerves. The use of ultrasound greatly reduces this risk. Ultrasound is used to locate the thyroid nodule that is to be sampled. You will be asked to lie back with your neck in a slightly prone position. The area will be cleaned with antiseptic wash and local anaesthetic or ice will be applied to numb the area. A very small needle will be guided into the thyroid gland under ultrasound guidance. The needle will be moved around the nodule to get adequate sample of the nodule. After the procedure, the injection site will be compressed to help avoid bleeding. You will be monitored until you have recovered appropriately and can return home. In 2007, the framework for the development of the Faceta system for reporting thyroid systology was commenced. This was formed to help multidisciplinary teams of endocrinologists, surgeons, pathologists and many more to plan treatment regimes. The categories are non-diagnostic and unsatisfactory. This means even when all efforts are made, sometimes there's not enough cells to make a diagnosis. Benign. Up to 70% of biopsies nodules are benign tumours. 
atypical of undetermined significance or follicular lesion of undetermined significance. Thyroid FNAs that do not fit into benign, suspicious or malignant categories are included here. Follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasm. The aim of this category is to identify a nodule that might be a follicular carcinoma. Suspicious or of malignancy. This means that your biopsy cells have some features that are concerning and some that are benign. Malignant. 3-5% to of biopsy tumours are cancerous. So let's go back to our case study. Emma's FNA was done under ultrasound guidance. During the procedure, she received local anaesthetic to numb the area. The thyroid nodule had eight passes to ensure adequate cell collection and she had nil issues and recovered well. Emma's results showed smears that resembled bland follicular cells and some thin colloid and mixed with blood and it was interpreted on the Posita scale as a type 4 cytology. Due to the increased size and suspicion of follicular carcinoma, she was referred for a total thyroidectomy. This confirmed the FNA result of a follicular carcinoma with surrounding enlargement of the tissue due to the inflammatory process of her Hashimoto's disease. Incidentally, the left nodule had an undetected papillary microadenoma. Ultrasound-guided FNA is a relatively safe procedure that can add value and information to your treatment and management. If you have any concerns, please talk to your healthcare professional. All information used in this video was sourced from the references below. All case information has been de-identified for this purpose. Thank you.